Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you. Dear viewers, welcome to another episode of your questions. In this program, we will discuss with, uh, about the life history of Isa alayhi salatu salam, his death, and of course, some other issues which many people have different interpretation. We will also uh, discuss uh, uh, this life character of this humble servant of God Almighty which can be found also in the Holy Quran and Hadith of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I am your host for this program, Dembaba. With me here in the studio, I have Ustaz Muhammad Bai, who is a missionary of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community and serving in Fonyi region. Ustaz, you are welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Ustaz, we have discussed the life history of Isa Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, not history per se, but then whether Isa Alayhi Salatu Wasallam is alive or dead, according to you, both Holy Quran, Hadith, and then saints of scholars prove to the fact that Jesus, alayhi salatu wasalam, that is Sayyidina Isa, alayhi salatu wasalam, is that he is not alive. So we have touched on some, uh, a little bit of Hadith of the Holy Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasalam. Uh, I want you to take us through some of the Hadith, more Hadiths of the Holy Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasalam, where especially the Holy Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasalam, said, Isa ibn Maryam, he will descend and he will be uh, uh, the Isa who will descend from heaven. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Ustaz Sahib. There is a lot of many hadiths where the Holy Prophet وسلم, uh, mentioned about the, the descent of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. And one of those hadiths uh, is as follows. He says, And Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal, يُوشِكُ مَنْ آشَ مِنْكُمْ أَنْ يَرَى عِيْسَ بْنَ مَرْيَمَ حَكَمًا عَدَلًا وَإِمَامًا مَحْدِيًّا فَيَكْسِرُ السَّلِيبَ وَيَكْتُبُ الْخِنْزِيرَ وَيَدَوُ الْجِسْيَةَ إِلَى آخِرِ حَدِيثِ Another hadith says Another hadith says كَيْفَ أَنْتُمْ إِذَا نَزَلَ بْنُ مَرْيَمَ فِيكُمْ وَإِمَامُكُمْ مِنْكُمْ because he says, وَالَّذِي النَّفْسِ بِيَدِهِ لَيُوشِكَنَّ أَنْ يَنْزِلَ فِيكُمُ بْنُ مَرْيَمَ حَكَمًا مُقْسِطًا فَيَكْسِرُ السَّلِيبَ وَيَكْتُلُ الْخِنْزِيرَ وَيَدَوُ الْجِزْيَدَ وَيَفِيدُ الْمَالُ حَتَّى لَا يَقْبَلَهُ أَحَدُ إِلَى أَكْرِي And another place says, كَيْفَ أَنْتُمْ إِذَا نَزَلَ بْنُ مَرْيَمَ فِيكُمْ وَإِمَامُكُم uh, hadith of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke about the descent of Ibn Maryam. Fikum. In this hadith, the Holy Prophet cleared the doubt of anybody who might be thinking that the Isa he's referring to is from Bani Israel. How? He said, he said, Kaifa antum. What state Will you be? Is a Nasalabnu Mariama? If the son of Mary descend, Alekum no fikum from among you. Nazala fikum and Nazala Alekum are different in Arabic. If it is Nazala fikum, it means the particular thing is coming up and will descend upon, upon you. But the Holy Prophet Allah made it very easy for us to understand by saying he will descend from amongst you, meaning he will be one of you. And for if anybody further have doubt, he said, wa imamukum minkum, another place for ammakum, that he shall be your imam from among you. He, that means he, he called him an imam. And there's a hadith I read before where he said he called him imam and mahdiyan. Yushikum man asha minkum. أَيَّلْقَى إِيسَى بَنَ مَرْيَمَ إِمَاهَمًا مَهْدِيًا وَحَكَمًا أَدَلًا وَحَكَمًا أَدَلًا وَإِمَاهَمًا مَهْدِيًا But what I want to emphasize here is the word نَزَلَ فِيكُمْ Or before that, Ibn Maryam. Isa has been called different names in the Holy Quran. Some places Allah call him Isa, uh, Al-Masihu Isa ibn Maryam. That is his full name. Sometimes Allah call him only Masih. Sometimes Allah call him only Isa. Sometimes Allah call him only Ibn Maryam. Two places he's called Ibn Maryam. In the Holy Quran, Allah says, وَلَمَّا دُرِ بَبْنُ مَرْيَمَ مَثَلًا إِذَا قَوْمُكَ مِنْهُ يَسِدُّونَ When 
the paradox or the parable of Ibn Maryam is mentioned. The, the followers of Muhammad, the Ummah of Muhammad, raise a clamor there. It means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave an example of someone who will be Mathiru Ibn Maryam. He will be a resemblance of Ibn Maryam. He will be called Ibn Maryam, Mathiru Ibn Maryam, or Mathiru al-Masih. He will be a resemblance of the Messiah. That's why he said, Walamma Durubab no Maryama. When Allah gave a parable, Walamma Durubab no Maryama. When the, a parable is given regarding the son of Mary, what happened? Ida qawmuka, the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his qawm, men who regarding that particular parable or metaphor, yasiduna, they raise clamor there. So when the hadith said, Kaifa antum iza nazal ibn Maryam. That Ibn Maryam is not Ibn Maryam fil haqiqa, but it's revealed Ibn Maryam, Mathilu al Masih. Mathilu Ibn Maryam. The resemblance of Ibn Maryam from the Ummah of the Holy Prophet. To qualify that, he said, Iza nazal ibn Maryam fikum. He said, fikum, not alaykum. That he will descend from among you, not upon you. Why? When you go to the Holy Quran, Allah said, Kul law kana fil ardi malaikatun yamshuna mutma'innina. Say, if there were, there, there were angels on the earth walking peacefully or quietly, lanazalna alayhim. It doesn't say lanazalna fihim. Feed no come here. Lanazalna alayhim minasama. So when Nazala Allah is mentioned, it gives the point of being in the heaven. La nazalna alayhim min as-sama'i malaka rasula. We would have surely sent down upon them from the heaven an angel as a messenger. But here Allah says, nazalna alayhim. In the case of Isa, is a kaifa antum Isa nazala ibn Maryam fikum wa imamukum minkum. Showing that this is quite, it doesn't mean Less than nazala min as samai. But because this is nazala minkum, nazala fikum. This is a nazala, it means the person coming will be raised from among you. It doesn't mean that he's coming from up. Another verse also qualified that. Allah said in the Holy Quran, Inna alladhina qalu rabbuna allahu thumma staqamu tatanazzalu alayhimul malaikat. Tatanazzalu, tatanazzalu alayhimul malaikat. Alayhim. So, but in the case of Isa, it doesn't say that uh, uh, nazala. Alay, alay, alay him. He said, Kaifa antum is a nazal abnu mariam fikum. Nazala ala al bait or nazala fil bait are different. So he, he descend upon the house or he's in, he descend, but he descend within the house or in the house it are different. So that's why the Holy Prophet Sallallahu used the word nazala fikum to, to remove the doubt that. Do not expect that the Isa coming will literally come down from heaven. Yes. But mm -hmm. he'll be from Stas, heaven. Uh, Saib, thank you so much. But mm -hmm. uh, just only one thing or two points I want to make here. Yeah. <clears throat> Isa wasalam, in an other hadith, he is told, uh, we are told by the Holy Prophet yes. Sayyanzilu Isa bun Maryama, uh, beside that wide minarat. In the minarat al Baida, fi Sharki is Damascus. It is a clear hadith that Isa alayhi salatu wasalam is going to descend around Damascus in the east or eastern part of Damascus mm -hmm. when he is coming from the skies. Mm -hmm. In this context, mm -hmm. but you are also pointing to the fact that there is also an other verse of the verse of the Holy Quran which says, mm -hmm. when the example of Isa ibn Maryam is made, the people of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam, there is some concern. Mm -hmm. Clamor, confusion. exactly. Confusion, because confusion. it is confusing. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the Holy Prophet sallam, has left them in their, that condition? The companions, I mean, because this verse was revealed at the time of the Holy Prophet sallam. Do you think the Holy Prophet sallam, didn't tell them the solution about the missile, the example which is given about Isa? Of course he did. He gave them, in fact, I'm very impressed you brought the hadith about Minaratul Baydaha. Because the hadith says that he will, he will, he will descend. Yanzilu. And the Minaratul Baydaha. 
الشرقيه الشرقيه دمشق <تصفيق> so i am happy that you, you was there the most important word used there is andy we call it andy yet andy i mean he will descend near or around if literally isa will descend from heaven literally holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam will not use the word andy he will use the word that he will descend ala al minaret al bayda on the white minaret but he doesn't say on the white minaret because nobody is coming from heaven literally and physically but somebody can descend beside that place or in any other place beside that white but minaret according to, yes but according to the, according to them what they say is that isa will descend on the white minaret with two angels and he will st- he will step from the white minaret he will come down wearing two yellow uh gowns upper one and uh, uh upper one and lower one and they're yellow in color and the whole person doesn't forbid his com- his followers from wearing yellow clothes he dislike it it's against his sunnah so is that the first thing he will do he'll go against the sunnah of the whole person doesn't by wearing yellow clothes upper and lower body will be yellow hmm? the second thing is that andy he will descend he said andy around if you use the word around and the yet to say that like he will he can descend around that area but the significance of the word looking at fikum joining the words kaifa antum iza nazal ibn maryam fikum wa imamukum minkum all this kum kum i you mentioned and the fi here and the men are all qualifying the fact that this man this descendant is not going to come from the heaven but he will descend the descent used here is only used to to point to the importance of his coming because the word descend is used for the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah allah said in the holy quran that allah send down upon you zikr and rasula that a, a, a reminder and a message so the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam his coming is described as he descended but we know very well that holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was raised he have his mother and father on this and he was raised you not know, this literal descent from heaven likewise in the holy quran allah said he wa anzalna al hadida i was i send down metals upon uh, on you but it doesn't nobody see physical metal coming or cattle and livestock and other things i mentioned in the holy quran even clothes huh? so nobody interpret that warisha that our clothes literally they came down from heaven that we wear but it's only pointing to the importance of that particular thing that is mentioned we have seen some somewhere when god almighty said he have sent down rain upon them and then some springs of water from all over the the country which destroyed the people of nuh alay salatu salam and of course his son was also part of it that was not only water coming from the skies alone but we are told that if it's water coming uh, within or uh from the spring or from the 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 how to call it the ponds or rivers whatever you call them some people say even in fact water was gushing forth from the earth what is your take on that yeah i have no problem that to say water come from because they are all link we are talking about these are things that are not to do with human beings you understand we understand that the earth and the heaven have a connection and there is some scientific explanation that how the whole thing process is done hmm? and the water come down that is that is fine evaporated there the steam torn out into the water whatever it come down has a rain upon people we but the, the, that is part of the world the heaven this people are river into or what there is that somebody live somewhere in another world and he will descend on the human being don't live anywhere because the point is that the holy quran established that anybody born anybody created from this world human being you must live on this world in this world and you must die here fiha tahyawna wa fiha tamutuna wa minha tukhrajun you are created there in shall you live there in fiha tahyawni there in shall you live and there in shall you die and there in shall you return to allah so it means that every human being who is created from this earth he shall live on this earth and he shall die and be buried on this earth that is what the quran says there is no other place that allah allocated for human being to live with their physical material body we will we will we will this agree to agree on that mm-hmm. that uh, some places or even nowadays 
we have seen some scientists who are performing some extra miles to go and live somewhere where it's not in this. They are not living in this art. That is something different. They are using the means of whatever they use from this place, but they are staying somewhere where you don't have this art. When you use the word, how do you interpret the word art? The word art doesn't mean only this sun you are standing on only. The heaven here are all part of the earth. Globally, we just call it the earth. It's not only this what we are studying on. If somebody use some some materials here and go and settle in some of the planets, pl planets over there, there was planet Earth. They are all part of the world. They are all part of the world. But those people are using some scientific thing. When did Isa start using those things to go there? No, that, uh, according to the power of Allah. The then why didn't Allah also give that power to Holy Prophet Allah to also go there? It was, when he was asked to go there. It was, why would you use an excuse by saying that I am just a human Basharan Rasulah? Was Isa not a Basharan Rasulah? It was, it was not necessary at the time of the Holy Prophet <laughs> because he have given them different signs. They disbelieve. They didn't agree. With, I mean, the disbelievers. He have shown them the sign of the moon. He split the moon into two. The point is that was Holy Prophet what, Isa also was not a sign. Him, his bath was a sign. Yes. Right? Was that not a sign for them? For them to and, and he, in fact, when he came to them, he told, "I came to you with a sign. I can use the sign of uh, this thing to rub, uh, turn it into a bird, huh? and then I, I cure the blinds and and, and and give life to the dead people." Was that was that? Uh, the, Those are all signs, but in that context, these people didn't accept, only failed to deny Jesus, but they wanted to kill him as well in the process, uh, which was not the case at the time of the Holy Prophet. Yes, but the point is that these people told the Holy Prophet of Islam, we want you to go to heaven. And look at the answer given. When he says, Al Kuntu illa Basharan Rasulah. Bash Basharan Rasula. He showed that he's a Bashar Rasulah. Fine. Was Isa a Bashar? Yes, of course. Rasulah. But he still went to the heaven, according to the non Ahmadis. Right? Holy Prophet was a Bashar. He was a human being. He was what? A rasulah, a messenger. And that is the excuse he gave for not going to the heaven. What make this an excuse? Maybe you can tell us. <laughs> the, the, the point is that Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, he's, he's also a Bashar rasulah. The point is that, is that no human being can physically, with his phys uh, material body, leave this world and go to another world. To stay in another place. Or stay in another place. Without, based upon, uh, beside the fact that scientifically, some people can leave uh, this uh, or this, uh, uh, and go and live there for some time. But they have to go with all, so, all the support they need from this earth to go there, from this uh, first plan to go there. Thank you so much, Ustas. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe we are coming closer to mm -hmm. the verdicts of scholars yes. or some. Uh, knowledgeable people mm -hmm. of Islam. Somebody can say, okay, I went to God Almighty with my physical body. Is that possible? It is not possible for a human being to go to Almighty with his physical body. The soul goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. God doesn't need the body. That so why then Musa alayhi salatu salam when left his people for 40 days and then he went to God Almighty? Meaning he went to a place whereby he can serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala quietly like Kalwa. In the Holy Bible, Allah says, with Allah, feel it to God. What are you waiting? You are sitting here. Why can't you feel it to God? Do you know His direction? God exists before time. And so, because of God exists before time, location cannot be allocated to God. With time, you can have location, but God exists before time. So, you cannot say God is in this particular place, God is in this particular direction. Not at all. And even in the Holy Quran, Allah says, when somebody is dying, you are around there. He said, we are more closer to that dead person, but what you don't see. You don't see what? You don't see Allah, but he's there. So, but Allah says, he's even closer to that dead person, more than us who are standing around the vicinity of the look and the man dying. So, the, the, what I want to put here is that 
that point you realize that Prophet, uh, sorry, the companion of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu said, when the Holy Prophet passed away, is Uma Muhammadun illa Rasul, qad khalad min qablihi rusul. When the Holy Prophet passed away, said Abu Bakr, Omar said, anybody who said Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away, he will kill the person. And he even gave them that he went away just like Moses went to his Lord. Fine. But the point is that why don't Prophet, uh, sorry, uh, Sayyidina Omar use the example of Isa? If he believed that Isa was alive, the best example he could have given is that just like Isa went to his Lord physically, Muhammad also went to his Lord physically. Uh, maybe uh, to him, uh, setting an example with Prophet Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, was not right because the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam, is far more greater than Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, in the context that he was a law bearing prophet. And you cannot set example with the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam. No, no, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam. That might be what I, what I believe in is because he knew 100% that Isa is dead. And in fact, later on, all, the first consensus in Islam is that all the companions of the Holy Prophet are unanimous without any uh, doubt believe that Isa died. Because when Sena Abu Bakr came in, he told him, Man kana minkum ya abudu Muhammad, fa inna Muhammad kadmat. Man kana minkum ya abudu Allah, fa inna la khayun lam yamut. He told him that any one of you who worships Muhammad, let him know that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died, passed away. And any one, of you, or any one of you who worships Allah, let him know that Allah is living, he shall never die. Then he said, O ma Muhammadun illa rasul, khad khalam min qabli rasul ila akhiri ayah. He then said, Muhammad is known but a messenger. All the messengers before Muhammad passed away, they all died. And they can only die in two ways, in mada or kudila, whether they die natural death or they are killed. Uh, thank you so much. But just I want you to touch on a little about the Scholar. sayings of the scholars yeah. uh, of Islam who agree to the fact that Isa alayhi salatu wasalam has passed away. Yes, thank you very much. Let me, and also quickly, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam, regarding the Isa comment, he gave different descriptions. He, the Isa comment in the latter days, he saw him, Rajul Adam, ma yura min udami rijali. He saw him, he was doing the Tawa of the Kaaba, and he described him as a man who is brown in color, and also he have a long hair. So the Isa he saw in the midst of the dead, in the, in the company of the dead people, he described him as Rajul Ahmaru, Jadu Sadri, Aridu Sadri. Hmm? Jad. I mean, he's a man who is red in color. He have a broad chest and a curly hair. Mm -hmm. Different description, different colors, different hairstyles, meaning that they are different characters, different people. The scholars that say that Isa died, for example, Muhammad Abdul Wahab, one of the most celebrated scholars um, um, of the Ahl Sunnah al Jama, he he's mentioned in his book called Muqtasar, Siratul Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said when a comp when the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away. A companion of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam named Jarud uh, radiallahu anhu, his people of Bahrain, Ibn Qais tribe, they went, they became apostate, simply because they believed that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam should not die. If he was a true prophet, he should live. So he was sent to them, this companion came to them, the companion of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told them, ma shahadatukum ala Musa. What is your testimony about Musa? They told him that Kalu Nashadu Annahu Rasulullah. He said, Masha Hadadukum Allah Isa. Nashadu Annahu Rasulullah. Then he they told him that we, we, we bear witness that he's also a messenger of Allah. What did they, then he told him, Wa Anna Ashadu, Allah ilaha illallah, wa anna Muhammadan Abduhu wa Rasulu. Asha kama ashu, wa mada kama matu. He told them that I also be a witness that there is no God but Allah. And Muhammad is his, is his messenger. And I know. And he still told them. Asha, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, live just like they live. He died just like they died. This companion of the Holy Prophet, when he said this to his tribe of Bahrain people, they then returned back to Islam. And this is another question. If the punishment of apostasy is killing, they should all have been killed. But they joined back to Islam and nobody killed them. That also break down, a refute that statement that Apostasy, the punishment for apostasy is by killing. Thank you so much, Ustaz. Mm. Uh, mm. Uh, uh, this was uh, taken from one book. What is the name Muqtasar of the book? Muqtasar Siratul Rasul by Muhammad Abdul Wahab, the founder of Wahhabism, the one who discovered the three Tawheeds. Uh, the one who brought up the idea of the three types of Tawheed. 
tahidu rububiyya uluhiyya asma wa sifa asma wa sifa so tawhid three types of tawhid he believed that the people of makkah they believe that allah created everything that's why the verse we prove that in the people of makkah before the advent of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they don't believe that the idols were created anything they only don't believe in tawhid uluhiyya that is to worship only one god but they believe that Allah Ar Rahman created the heaven and the earth, anything between them. Their idols do not worship, uh, create anything. They only worship their idols in order to be closer to God, but they don't consider them as part of the Creator. So that's why the verse, that is actually pointing to the fact that all those living beings that are worshipped beside a particular Isa, and the act of creation is attributed to them. They are dead, not living. They don't know when, they perceive not when they will be raised. And Isa is, um, is among the foremost that I worship as God beside Allah. Thank you so much. I believe we will touch on this. We will get more sayings yeah. of different, different scholars. And yes, of course, if mean. possible, mm -hmm. companions of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if also possible, the noble wives of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As you already told me that these are all, they are all having their take on this issue. So possibly we will discuss it in our next program. Inshallah. But for this episode, this all time allowed us, and thank you so much for your company. Mm -hmm. And I hope also we will discuss the signs of that Isa ibn Maryam, who is supposed to come. As Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there will be Isa ibn Maryam. He will come, he will descend, and we will discuss about him. What are the signs, his signs, and then if you are saying that it is not the same Isa ibn Maryam. You will tell us the resemblance, inshallah, in our next programs. And after that, we will check on more topics. We have more topics to discuss. Kataman Nabiyin is also a controversial topic among the Muslims. Mm -hmm. We will discuss on that. That is the seals of prophets. Mm -hmm. We will also touch on that, inshallah. But for, uh, for now, thank you so much for your company, and we hope to have you next time. Thank you. Dear viewers, uh, from us here at MTA International, the Gambia Studios, I am your host, Dembaba, with your guest, Ustaz Muhammad Bai, who is a missionary serving in uh, the Gambia and, of course, in Fonyi region. Until we come your way again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.